Uh, so there's a group of pathogens, one of which is called Enterococcus faecium. And Enterococcus faecium is a gram-positive bacteria that just means something about its cell wall. It doesn't particularly matter if you don't know what that means, um, which is responsible for a lot of urinary tract infections, endocarditis, and, um, and also wound infections. And one of the most common places that you can get Enterococcus faecium infections is if you're hospitalized. It's a really nasty little bugger that causes a lot of problems in the hospital. It's actually a normal, what we call a commensal gut bacteria. And by that, I mean that very many of us have it in our gut normally, and it doesn't cause any problem. It only causes problems when it gets into places like endocarditis is around your heart, your urinary tract, or in a wound, into places where it shouldn't be. And then it causes a lot of problems. The next one is a pathogen called Staphylococcus. Um, also, a gram-positive, this is a common skin bacteria. About a third of people have it either on their skin or up their nose. Um, and you've probably heard of this because it causes what's called meth methicillin resistant Staph aureus. MRSA. MRSA. Okay. So you've probably heard of, of Staph aureus because it's the, the cause of MRSA. And then there's Klebsiella, which is the thing that we're going to look at. And Klebsiella is it's the other kind of gram, it's gram negative. And it's also commonly found in either your mouth, your skin, or your intestines. Um, if you get Klebsiella in your lungs, it's really deadly. That's bad. And it's also, and because of this, it's a real problem in intensive care units in hospitals. The leading drug against Klebsiella, carbapenem, um, is kind of no longer working because, well, there's carbapenem resistant Klebsiella. Oh, I should also say with Staph aureus, by the way, there's about 80,000 cases a year, and there's about 11,000 deaths a year. So if you get MRSA, the prognosis is really not very good. Okay, so Klebsiella, Acinetobacter, Uh, 
Asaneta back to Baumnai. Um, this is also called Iraqi Bacta. It's very common in service members um, returning from Iraq and Afghanistan, places like that. And it's also resistant to all antibiotics. Pseudomonas. Originosa. It's um, a common, very common soil organism. Variants of Pseudomonas originosa are associated with plants, but if you acquire it in hospital, um, and it also infects your wound, it has a 40 to 60 percent mortality rate. And then the last of this group are called Enterobacter species. And um, the Enterobacter species are also, they also cause urinary tract infections and respiratory infection infections. And they're basically resistant to everything. So this group of pathogens collectively are called the E-S-K-A-P-E, -E, the escape pathogens. And the reason that we're worried about them is because Enterococcus, resistant to all known antibiotics, MRSA, resistant to all known antibiotics, Klebsiella, carbapenem, carbapenem resistant Klebsiella, resistant to all known antibiotics. Acinetobacter, resistant to all known antibiotics. Pseudomonas, resistant to all known antibiotics. Entropactor, resistant to all known antibiotics. Are you guys worried? You should be. If you get one of these infections, the mortality rate, 40 to 60 percent, one in eight, they're pretty nasty, and we don't have any antibiotics left to treat them. So this is one of the main reasons right now for studying microbial genomics, is to try and understand where these pathogens came from, why they became so nasty, how they became resistant to antibiotics, and what the hell are we going to do about it to solve the problem. <laughs>